In this week's training focus, we're going to talk about determining time of death and some of the problems that can arise from that. So determining time of death, you would think is a very straightforward thing, but it's not always that straightforward. It can have criminal implications as well as civil implications. And we're going to talk about both of those here in just a moment. Now, the time of death, there are three times of death. There's physiological time of death, the legal time of death, and estimated time of death. Now, physiological time of death is when a person's vital functions actually cease to operate. Now, we don't always know that time. So, uh, someone could, could fall in a public place of a cardiac arrest, die moments later. Ambulance gets there, works them, even takes them to the hospital, the, and the ER doc determines their time of death. And when that doc determines that time of death, that's the legal time of death. If you have a coroner or a medical examiner investigator that they're on the scene determining time of death and whatever state statute allows him to do that, that's the legal time. It's not necessarily the physiological time because that could have been minutes or hours before. If someone is found and been dead for a couple of days, the legal time is the time they were found. Then you have estimated. Well, estimated time of death is just that, an estimated time of death. And that could be anywhere from minutes to years. It could be from their last known alive. They left work at five o'clock. They're on video. We know they left work at five o'clock. But they're found in their home the next day at 9 a.m. Now, the estimated time of death, of course, is going to be, you can assume that the drive time, let's say the drive time is 30 minutes. They get home. Uh, you know, maybe you, you put it 6 p.m. to 9 a.m. Well, you then, um, that we're not going to get into that on this podcast, but there are other factors such as post-mortem intervals, the rigor, lividity. There are other, th the scene features, their clothing. There are other things you can do to narrow down that estimated time of death. But generally, an estimated time of death is a time frame. You know, I like NCIS and I like Dr. Ducky, but to be able to put a liver probe in someone and say, yep, they died at 2.12 this morning, that's not possible. So we have an estimation. Now, yes, there's things we can do to make that window narrower, but never get to an exact time. So physiological, legal, and estimated. Those are the times that you're going to be dealing with the most, and mostly it's going to be legal and estimated. And that can occur in every death. There's going to be, to some extent, all of that. But the legal time is what goes on the death certificate. So what about some of the implications that can arise, some of the problems you can have in a time of death ruling. Number one, it guides the investigation. If you as the investigator puts an estimated time of death, let's just say between 1800 and 2200, for whatever reason that you put that four hours in there with all the methods available to you, that guides the investigation in knowing that that person most likely succumb to their death between 1800 and 2200. So now, does that help rule in and rule out alibis? Does that rule in or rule out suspects? Because if you're saying that the estimated time of death was 1800 to 2200, and this uh, suspect is certainly have an alibi for those times and could not have done it, then that may excuse that suspect. Insurance issues might arise because if uh, sometimes there's insurance company, if when you, when you sign your life insurance, there's dates and times that you sign it. If you have a 24 month policy insurance companies at times and some companies, I have, I have been uh, involved in a few of these questions. If it's 24 months and you signed this at 2 PM, your policy, but you died at 10 AM. The insurance company can fight to say, well, it wasn't a full 24 months to the time. Now, a lot of times they may or may not lose, but the point is time can be important. It can also be important in a multiple death situation. Let's say a car accident where two people are killed. If you know, if someone is on the scene of competent authority, a nurse, a doctor, a paramedic, someone that you could justifiably say 
knows enough about life and death and medical that they can say this person was alive, then you can say, okay, that person was alive longer than this other person. But if no one of competent authority is on the scene to say that, then it is advised, it is best advised that everybody had the same legal time of death. So whatever that time that may be, the car accident, two people are killed, one's ejected, one's not. But whenever the fire department and police and paramedics get there, both people are dead. Um, whether whether someone heard someone groaning for a few seconds or not, uh, they're both they're both dead. So when you get there as a coroner, a medical examiner, investigator, or you're involved in some way to rule time of death, the time the paramedics got there and determined there was no signs of life, you can use that, or whatever your state statute says about how you determine legal time of death. The cautionary tale here is be sure they all died at the same time. If, there's, if, it's, a, if it's a car accident and they're all dead when you get there, then they all, did, they all died at 2 p.m. Not, not look at the body in the car at 2 and then go to look at the body who was ejected at 2.15. So that time of death is 2.15 because it was 15 minutes after you looked at the first body. The problem that can come up in that is who died first. And so in a civil cases, if there's inheritance, for instance, where a man died and all of his property, then, of course, went to, to wife because wife is, um, you know, the, the inherited the property. But, but then wife died, you said, 15 minutes later. Well, and I'm going off experience here. Well, then her children from a previous marriage, is it feels like they're entitled to everything that the wife their mother had when the children of the father from a previous marriage felt that they should have the inheritance. That can be a real problem. So, and then, and then besides criminal issues, civil issues, insurance issues, if you have multiple people dead at the scene and they're, and they certainly are all dead when you get there, just rule them all the same time. Now, someone is alive, got taken to the hospital, died later. That that's different. That that is absolutely someone died later. But if they're all dead at the same time or at the, at the scene, then and, and no one of competent authority can tell you they were alive, then just rule the legal time of death the same. You'll 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 suffer a lot less problems. Are you wanting to further your education in death investigation or maybe you're looking to enter the field? The Death Investigation Academy is where you need to start. With accredited training, both online and in classroom, you're sure to find the courses and education you are looking for. The Death Investigation Academy is nationally recognized and is a proven leader in education for the medical legal death investigation industry as well as law enforcement. Check out the Academy today by clicking over to deathinvestigation.training. Again, that's www.deathinvestigation.training dot training.